Good day. Welcome to uh, another lesson on project management skills program, which is part of our um, enter entrepreneurship master class. So today you are looking at the module project planning. Oh, project definition and planning, right? So in this module, we now going into a little bit more detail because the two uh, modules that we've done, we've done the introduction, we've done the uh, techniques and principles on project management, and now, now we're going into the project planning. And as we're discussing on the, on the introduction, we touched on, on the planning, the importance of planning. Yes, we went into a little bit details, but now we, we're looking at the planning and with the objective of developing a project plan. Because that's where now, this, that is the document that's going to help you to execute the project the way it's supposed to. And I must emphasize, because in the previous lessons I've emphasized the application of project management principles. So if you didn't um, watch the video on project management principle, please watch that video because it gives you the broader understanding of different principles or the principles that you need to apply when you are developing and implementing a project. It gives you a nice summary of the things that you need to do. And on this lesson now, we're, we're going a little bit deeper in doing the actual planning, right? Because when it comes to project management, the planning part is a, it's a, it's a call it the biggest portion of project management because the phases of project management is one is you define the project and you plan how you're going to execute the project. That's now the basis. So from the planning now, the planning becomes your your foundation. It becomes the foundation of the of the project. If I can put it, maybe it's more equivalent to a business plan for a business. Right. A business plan guides you, it sets the vision, mission, the objectives, the processes that you need to follow, and, 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 and. And that we use it as a guide or as a management tool to make sure that you achieve what you need to achieve. So that's the business plan. So in a project, the project plan is the business plan for the project. So in the, in the planning and definition, when you, you, you're planning and defining your, your project, it's very, very important to be clear on what the project is supposed to achieve. All right. And in the previous lesson, I spoke about uh, setting smart goals, right? So when you're defining the project, it must be very, very clear to the next person. So for that to be clear, it needs to be smart. Okay. Smart, what does smart mean? Smart is S-M-A-R-T, right? Is, it's an acronym used when you're setting objectives. It's a principle that they say as a business or as anyone actually, not necessarily the business. When you're setting objectives, they must be smart. And then what does it mean? The objectives must be smart. I repeat, there must be one, there must be specific, meaning you, the person, when, it, when a person reads your, your objectives, that person must understand what exactly are you talking about. So now going back to maybe the, our project of raising funding for our Spaza shop, right? The project must be specific to say, what do you want to achieve? The fact that you're just saying, uh, I just want to raise funding for to start a spaza shop, that's not good enough. It's not smart. It's not S. It's not specific from the, the smart. It's not the S. It doesn't meet the S requirement. Meaning, if you are raising funding, you must be specific to say, uh, the objective is to raise funding for a spaza shop, and I want to raise, let's say, 100,000 to set up a spaza shop specific it's a goal that you want to achieve right it's, it's specific enough we know what you want you are doing we know what you want to achieve is to raise funding so we'll be able to understand and measure uh, your performance if you achieved what you the project was supposed to achieve okay then measurable 
the project is the aim now in the smart whatever that you want to achieve is it measurable can we hold you accountable or even if it's your own project can you hold yourself accountable to say i didn't achieve this so as i said that if the project is to raise funding if you don't put the amount there how will they measure if you achieve the objectives or not so the measurable one is we when all is said and done did you achieve what you said you wanted to achieve yes if you just said raise funding for the spaza shop you might have raised one cent then you say no i've achieved the project but if you don't have, be specific enough when you're setting the objectives you say i want to raise hundred thousand that will be a measure that has been used to measure your performance or to assess your performance and then you get to a in the smart it's achievable if you are trying to raise 100 billion for a spaza shop can you achieve that okay some they can but practically no but if you are raising 100,000 is it achievable yes so the project sounds to be smart no it's okay it's ma now because we said it's specific we said it's measurable now we're saying it's it's achievable now r is realistic can you realistically raise hundred thousand to to set up a spaza shop yes i can can you raise hundred billion to set up a spaza shop obviously not it's not realistic no one is going to fund you hundred million so that you can set up a, a spaza shop okay maybe they can but it's not practical so it's not uh, realistic then what's missing now is the time timelines is it time-based do you know when the fundraising is going to start and end because without the timing or the time it might you might say no i'm still busy with the project 100 years later no i'm still raising funding for my spaza shop 10 years later because you didn't define the timelines so you need to define the timelines within the project to say i want to raise the funding uh, now we're in 2023 by the end of 2023 i must have raised the hundred thousand for the spaza shop or the spaza shop must be operating by let's say the 30th of june the, now that's time-based it becomes very very important now if the objectives are smart as i've explained now then it makes it easier for you to develop your your project plan right the plan obviously in the in, in your plan but remember now okay this actually is not it doesn't only apply to when you're doing the project right it applies to your to your business when you're doing a business plan when you're doing your strategic planning your annual planning you must always meet this smart principles right and then that makes it easier to say you have a plan you have objectives that needs to be achieved from the plan so for you to achieve this specific measurable achievable uh, realistic and time-based objectives these are the activities that i need to do right now in your plan you define the activities what are the activities that you need to to achieve okay so now <clears throat> where are you is the project started no have you sec secured the project sponsor no because the <coughs> objective of the project can only be defined by the project sponsor right yes it might be your own project or whatever the project where you're getting where, where you're setting it up but ultimately the person in control is your project sponsor if you're sponsoring the project yes it's you who's putting in the money to sponsor the project so the <coughs> objectives that you are setting in your project plan must meet your sponsors requirements it must be clear if the sponsor is giving you money to set up a project or sponsor <coughs> it could be your customer let's say your customer wants you to deliver uh, the kindles they need to add, give you specific to say uh, deliver deliver kindles as a brand a kindle as a brand and then yes you can do the project planning but if you do the project planning without 
the team members you might miss certain activities or you might not be able to cost certain activities or you might not be able to ascertain how long those activities will take because you'll be you, you might not be the expert but if you are obviously if you don't have any other team you are the expert then you, it's cool you can you can set up and uh, do your planning by yourself but you need to identify the people that are required make sure that you include them in your planning process because it's very very important to make sure that the, the activities but most projects fail or they have scope creep they they fail they don't meet the requirement they spend more than they should because the problem is in the planning the planning is not done the way it's supposed to be done okay so in terms of the the, the project we know okay the maybe the popular one in south africa is, is midupi they've overspent i think more than 100 percent of the i don't know how many billions they've they wasted there at, at midupi because the project was not planned accordingly the stakeholders were not at the table when the project was planned the key players in the project who were going to implement the project were not part of the project planning some they went to somewhere in the in the boardroom they decided to to plan this massive project without involving the actual team members yes you can't because the, the project like me to be just big right so yes you couldn't have they couldn't have involved everyone but they could have identified the key stakeholders that they're gonna uh, get advice from because i mean now even today we're still experiencing load shading but we spend billions in midupi and it's not functioning at full capacity because that project project was just poorly executed because they didn't do proper project planning so the objectives of midupi obviously it was it was virus with uh, sufficient electricity and now i mean i mean it's, i think it's more than uh, 15 years old now the project but still it's not delivering what it's supposed to deliver because the deliverables even though the del deliverables were clear but it appears as if certain things were not achievable it was not practical for them to achieve the the objectives that they they had set for for that project and certain things uh, in terms of measurable they were struggling to measure certain things one okay because now i'll just go through the the, the smart thing to, to show you how, where the problem comes in if you don't have clear achievable objectives that can be measured we want 10 of those and then uh, we want it within maybe six months but if they can say we want it tomorrow then it's not achievable then uh, realistic can you deliver them within six months yes or six weeks yes you can and they gave you timelines to when you're gonna deliver so that's your project sponsor because why <coughs> why are they pro are your project sponsor it's because they will be paying you for 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 those candles so you must achieve their objectives so that they can pay you if it's an internal project you become the sponsor if you are the owner of the business because you are sponsoring whatever the project so they must meet your requirement as as the sponsor it becomes very very important in your planning process to make sure that these smart goals that you have set <coughs> they meet the objectives of your sponsor that's where now you define the project <coughs> in that way it helps you to define what needs to be achieved and and once the, the objectives are smart then the definition of the project is clear now it's known what needs to be achieved we need to raise funding we need to have to raise hundred thousand for this spaza shop by in six months time then the funding must be in the bank account that's our objective that that is our project it's clear now so once one project is clearly defined okay now we, we go look at the team now who do we need to make this project reality even if it's a big project setting up a mine uh, you might need geologists you might need uh, engineers you might need a mining uh, managers you might need 
a lot of people might need community participation and all that so you need now once you define the objective that needs to be achieved and you defined it and it's smart as we explained earlier then you look at the team that's required who should we bring on board for to execute this project then after identifying the team the important people that needs to be part of the the project now you're going to get into the project planning because it's very very important to make sure that the activities but most projects fail or oh, they have scope creep they they fail they don't meet the requirement they spend more than they should because the problem is in the planning the planning is not done the way it's supposed to be done okay so in terms of the the, the project we know okay the maybe the popular one in south africa is, is midupi they've overspent i think more than 100 percent of the i don't know how many billions they've they wasted there at, at midupi because the project was not planned accordingly the stakeholders were not at the table when the project was planned the key players in the project who were going to implement the project were not part of the project planning so they some they went to somewhere in the in the boardroom they decided to to plan this massive project without involving the actual team members yes you can't but the, the project like me to be just big right so yes you couldn't have they couldn't have involved everyone but they could have identified the key stakeholders that they're gonna uh, get advice from because i mean now even today we're still experiencing load shading but we spend billions in midupi and it's not functioning at full capacity because that project project was just poorly executed because they didn't do proper project planning so the objectives of midupi obviously it was it was to 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 provide us with uh, sufficient electricity and now i mean i mean it's, i think it's more than uh, 15 years old now the project but still it's not delivering what it's supposed to deliver because the deliverables even though the de deliverables were clear but it appears as if certain things were not achievable it was not practical for them to achieve the the objectives that they they had set for for that project and certain things uh, in terms of measurable they were struggling to measure certain things one okay because now i'll just go through the the, the smart thing to, to show you how, where the problem comes in if you don't have clear achievable objectives that can be measured one one the objectives of the project was specific right to to generate i can i don't like i don't have how many kilowatts needs to be generated that was specific enough it was measurable clear was it achievable definitely not because now the overruns i mean it took more than double the time that they were supposed to 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 have finished the project so clearly clearly the project was not achievable Give, okay generally it was but not within the time frame that they have had given and then was it measurable no because they struggled to measure what was expected because we now have overspent a couple of billions in that in that project so measurability became a problem so even now we know that the, we have overall budget but we don't know what budget was in electrical in a portion or in the building portion or whatever so the measurability was, was clearly a challenge with with that project the timeline <coughs> the timeline yeah the timelines were there but were they achievable no were they realistic no so you can have a project which you set specific goals you set measurable goals but you might be under an illusion that they are achievable so that's that the main thing happened there they were under illusion that the 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 those objectives were achievable and then measurable yes they, they had measurable challenges there because they couldn't measure who's supposed to do what suppliers were overpaid and some were paid more than 
like double paid and all that and the timelines were not realistic so the biggest challenge okay for me i don't know but from as an observer and as a south african the biggest challenge is was on the planning process yes you have these smart goals but did you bring in the team that is going to execute the project earlier on or you did all this planning and you issued the tenders and people apply for the tenders and they once they they've been awarded then they tell you that no what you're looking for in terms of this objective is not achievable then you need to uh, negotiate but i guess they were not using their own money so they were able to go back into the fiscals and ask the taxpayers to fund the the excess money that is required but if you're executing your project remember you don't have government you don't have taxpayers to, to bail you out if the project is not executed so after you set the goals make sure that you identify the team that is going to execute the project so the team obviously you will have project activities that needs to be executed so that team it must be very very competent so that when we come up with the activities that needs to be done those activities also their objectives and their um, uh, measurements are clear to say when you're doing one two three four then this is the achievement that we're expecting this is the measurement that you we're going to use to measure your performance so you bring in the team into 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 the project into our spaza shop project Okay, it's not that complicated. I mean, the team probably will consist of you as a an entrepreneur, maybe your accountant, uh, yeah, maybe a consultant that's going to put together your business plan and go out to look for funding. So that those two, those three, can be enough. To, it's a sufficient team to execute a project to to raise funding. Then you need to earlier on identify your stakeholders who's gonna fund you right who's funding spaza shops in south africa okay we know you can't go to your nefs your idc your dbsa your land bank so you're eliminating a whole lot of funding institutions probably you can go to cifa maybe in your provincial institution from the government side or the department for small business maybe it can it might assist maybe through cifa okay now they are major with seed and all that so the department of small business is the one of the stakeholders that's the key stakeholder because if you are raising funding from the government side those are the like maybe not the only one but the likely one and maybe your provincial tfi might be a key stakeholder so you need to make sure that you engage them earlier as stakeholders you can consult with them or inform them so that you are clear on what are what what are their requirements okay maybe possibly might look at the bank they can use your personal assets and whatever to give you the the funding and maybe you might look at crowdfunding or looking at okay maybe angel investors is far-fetched maybe you can look at the private funding institutions but most of the private funding institutions they're looking at funding your orders your contracts and all that but setting up a, a spaza shop you obviously don't have the orders you don't have the contracts so you might not be successfully funded by, by the private sector market or maybe alternatively you might look at enterprise development institutions like maybe i don't know you might want to partner but okay they're not doing it but you know like oh yeah you, you pick and pay they do your smaller version of pick and pays in in townships so those are the key stakeholders maybe you might look at them to be the stakeholder so if you're raising funding those are your stakeholders so you need to identify them earlier on to know their requirement and the expectation so you identify the team then you have identified the who are the stakeholders so now your project plan is taking shape we have a team okay we have the objective what you want to achieve which is smart we have uh, a team which will be the people who are responsible or the person can be one person who will be responsible to execute the project 
we have the stakeholders or the team, meaning they have different responsibilities. So there will be project manager, there will be person responsible for certain activities within the, the project. Then we have uh, you have identi we just identify the, the key stakeholders because we are doing the Spaza shop, the key stakeholders are your funding institutions. We spoke to who will be doing that. So we, we, I mean, I've, chan, I've, cha, I've just done the, a quick scan for you. We are, I just scanned who is available, who can you approach and all that and how. So you have identified them, the, the stakeholders. Then as a team, then we look at the next thing when you develop a business, not business plan, project plan, is to look at the activities now. You list the activities in your plan, right? What needs to be done when you're raising funding? Business plan development, quotations, uh, bank statements, financial, financial statement, maybe a little bit of market study or letters of intent from customers. Then, those are the activities that you need to identify and then drafting of the business plan, the submission to the funding institution, the signing of the legal agreements and all that. So this, these are all the activities that you will undertake in your capital raising project, right? So once you identify those activities, then you allocate each activity. How long will it take you to, to execute and maybe to, to get quotations? Because to know how much you want, or how much you want to raise needs to be supported by quotations. So how long will it take you to get quotations? Then you list it as, a, as an activity. How long and how much will it cost you? So that you have a costing attached to it. We're developing a project plan here. The second one is you need historical financials if you're an existing business, but you might be a startup, but let's say you are an existing business. Then how long will the accountant be able to provide you with financial statements, right? We know the funding institution they want. One, maybe the previous two years signed financials, and then maybe they'll say, give us the management accounts, meaning your latest financial report, which is not older than three months. So we might have the annual reports, historical, but we need to know how long it's going to take the accountant to prepare the, the, the management accounts. And without bringing all the stakeholders uh, in the meeting or in the project or without involving them, we might, you might not know the, the capacity of the, 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 the accountant. So you need to make sure that the accountant is on board he understand what needs to be done. He will give you to say, to prepare the financials is going to take me so much and it's going to cost you so much. Okay, then which each and every one, then you come up with the activities and you engage the relevant people in all the activities that you need to undertake for this project. And once you have the activities, once you allocate it, how long it's going to take, and then you check the availability, when can it be done? and you allocate the cost to it. Okay, so in your body of your plan now, you have um, the objectives, what needs to be achieved, you have the executive summary of the project, what the project is all about, you have identified the team members and their roles, you have allocated them roles, you have identified your stakeholders, who are the stakeholders and why are they stakeholders, why are they important. And now we come into the activities, you have defined all the activities that needs to be undertaken you've allocated the time when and when will they start when will they finish you've allocated the the resources to those activities so now that becomes your body of your activity to say these are the activities that needs to be executed now that's the crux of your project plan to say these are the activities that needs to be uh, to be executed and well defined and how much is going to cost you and when will they start when will they end how long are those activities uh, going to take place so that it gives you guide to say even when you do your project schedule you know when the project is going to start and when the project is going to end you know how much is going to cost you it needs to go into your your project plan those things now that you you we we have defined the project 
we have set the objectives. We know who are the uh, who is the sponsor. We know the stakeholders. We know the team members, right? And we have identified the the activities that needs to take place, right? We said we have identified the activities. We started to say how long it's going to take take us to complete the activities, and we we define the resources that are required. How much is going to cost us to execute that uh, those activities? And now we're still on our sponsor sponsorship project, right? Now we need to schedule or prioritize those activities. So in our plan, we have the activities, we have defined them, how much it's going to cost us. Now we go into what is called scheduling. So in the plan, we're going to schedule uh, those activities. So in terms of defining them, uh, sometimes they use work-based structure where they define the, the, the activities on the planning, what activities will be involved on the planning side, and then on the execution side, on the reporting side, and on the project closure. So once we define those activities, we need to categorize them to say uh, they fall in which category so that we know uh, when to perform, when those activities are supposed to be performed. For, for example, if it's a planning activity, obviously planning needs to happen before execution. And then, okay, reporting is continuous. It can go across the, each section of the, pro, of the project implementation. And then the last one becomes the project closure. I mean, it's obvious you can't do project closure before uh, execution. And you can't execute before you, before you do the planning. But, okay, I, okay, I've seen projects where the execution is started and the planning is following the execution. But that's not a a good or best practice of uh, developing and managing a project. So what you need to do is you need to plan. So from the activities that you have identified, remember those activities are the ones that are going to help you achieve your obje objectives. From those activities, then you identify if they are for the planning section or are on the execution section or are they for reporting or are they for project closure. And then you start prioritizing your activities, right? And remember, when you, when, <clears throat> when you are planning the activities, there are certain activities will not start before other activities. So, for, for example, the consultant cannot submit, if there is an activity, to submit a business plan to funding institutions and read the application form and submit and present the, the business plan. So the consultant cannot do that before the business plan is completed. Yes, you can go pitch whatever, but to submit the actual business plan, the business plan needs to be, uh, needs to have been prepared or it must be existing for him to or her to submit that document, right? So that now is called, like they, they call it uh, predecessors. Né? So there are certain activities that need to happen before other activities that before other activities. So when you're doing your, your project plan, make sure you identify the activities that need to happen first. You prioritize your activities and there are certain activities that cannot happen because other activities have to be completed first. So you need to be able to identify those activities. And uh, the length of your plan or your project plan is is based on what is called the critical path. There's, there's, a, there's a term that is used in project management. They say it's a critical path. So to see how long the project is going to take you when you're doing your planning, you look at your critical path, right? The critical path means you take all the activities that cannot uh, happen concurrently. So you look at the activities you follow the activities that cannot happen con concurrently. So if I can, okay, the accountant can prepare the financial projections, right? And in the meantime, I can go look for quotations to be included in the business plan. And then a consultant can go and do the market study. So from those activities, they can happen at the same time. So, but when you're looking at the critical plan, we look at 
those activities that are happening at the same time, but you choose the longest. That's the first path. Then we see which one is dependent on these activities. Then you look at the next one to see which one is dependent. So even though in hours, maybe we can spend, maybe okay, let's say in days, it can take us 10 days. But because some activities are dependent on the other activities, we can't spread the project over 10 days. Because the, let's say drafting the business plan, it takes 10 days. Uh, preparing financial takes five days. Getting the quotation takes two days. Doing the market research takes six days. You see, in total, the, 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 the longest activity is 10 days. But the project cannot take 10 days, even though the longest activity is 10 days. Because the longest acti that activity cannot start before these other activities have been completed. So you will have to wait the, 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 the seven days to finish the financials before the, the preparation of the business plan can start. Then it means the project is going to take you 17 days. Because seven days for preparing the financials, and the, the, the consultant maybe might be con as well conducting the, the market research and it starts only after the seventh day. So it means your critical path, how long the project is going to take you, it's 17 days. So you must just be careful, not put your project schedule based on the number of days only, but you must take into account which activities are dependent on each other so that you take it clearer a, a picture on practically how the project, how long is gonna, your, your project is gonna take. So that's the first thing that you need to make sure that when you do your planning, your project planning, the scheduling is properly uh, set. But Super Team Maker has the tool that will help you identify which ones are predecessors and all that so that your, pro your project scheduling is proper in a way that it takes into account the, those, pro, those activities that are dependent on each other. That's one. When you're doing the planning, that's one thing that you need to make sure that you take into account. And the second thing that you need to make sure that you take into account is the resource allocation. Right. Let's say the consultant is supposed to conduct the market research and write the business plan. So you can't put those activities to say they're going to happen at the same time because you are using the same resource. So what we need to do is, you do what is resource planning. If the same resources are used to perform different activities, then you prioritize the activities to say, we're gonna use this resource here, and once it's done, we're gonna only start that activity after that resource has completed its job. Even if it's a laptop, you have one laptop in your organization, right? Then if I'm using the laptop to go to research, that means the consultant cannot start writing the business plan because it doesn't have the laptop. So that means the consultant needs to wait for me to complete my research using the laptop and then I'll give them the laptop and they start their, their uh, activity. So when you plan the activity, make sure that you don't, because that's where sometimes uh, projects become tricky. People forget to look at their critical path, as I've just explained it, and they forget to look at their um, uh, resource allocation. They double book the, the resource. And then if you double book the resource, or you don't look at your critical path properly, then your project is bound to be delayed. You will not be able to achieve your your, your objective. So you're going to become the statistics. Well, statistically, they say about 50% of the projects are, are late. Né? And 45% are over the budget. So if you don't look at your resources and your critical path, you are likely to deliver your project late. And then once the project becomes late, then the budget follows. Okay, not all the time, but most of the time, the budget will follow. You will overspend on, on projects. So make sure that you don't run, overrun your, your project and you don't 
uh, overspend on your project. For you to be able to do that, you need to make sure that when you're allocating the resources, you give them, uh, you make sure that you have sufficient resources to execute. You don't uh, double book the resources or overstretch res the resources that you have. And when you're allocating how long it's going to take you to finish the, pro the project, make sure that you understand which activities are dependent on each other so that you don't put them together. They might confuse you to think that you can finish a project in uh, 10 days to only find that, no, you can't do certain activities at the same time. So you, you, you need to stretch your project over 17 days. So, as I said, I mean, that's, that's chronic to, to based on the research that 50% of projects are late and 45% are overspent. And another thing when you're doing your, your planning, right? Yes, a project plan is a live document. That means it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it can be adjusted, it can be adopted, it can be uh, adapted, I mean, it can be adapted and all that. But the causes of many, many, many project failures is because of what they call scope creep, right? You want to sit with your experts and set the activities that needs to happen. You set the resources, you set the timelines, and now you see, oh, but we can do this this way. Oh, instead of doing the spaza shop, why don't we add a butcher? Or why don't we add a liquor, a liquor store? Or whatever that you might want to get, maybe fast food next to it. Then let's say you are adding a, a bottle store, a liquor store. Then Obviously, one is the cost already will exceed the, the budgeted cost. The time as well, because you still have to get the, the licenses and all that. So it might take you longer than you thought it will. So in that, scope creep is also the main contributor. So scope creep basically means you add additional activities that were not part of your initial plan. So to avoid scope creep is to make sure that you plan your project properly. And you have a formal process of introducing new activities in the project. Because sometimes you'll never finish. You could just say, no, let me add this. Okay, if I add this, this will be nice. If I add this, this will be nice. Or from even the customer perspective, remember, as I said earlier, there are ty different type, type of project, right? It might be a project that you are doing it for your customer, or it might be your internal project, right? So if it's an internal project, you need to make sure that you manage it internally to make sure that there are no scope creeps, there are no additional things that you add to your project. Say, no, it will be nice to have this. It will, if it was not part of the initial project, you might do phase two to add whatever that you want to add, but avoid scope, scope creep because it costs many businesses to, not businesses, projects to fail. So don't add too many scope creep. Yes, sometimes when you start with a project, there are unknowns that you can address up front. Because remember we spoke about um, uh, the risk when we, when we were discussing the, the techniques. Yes, there are certain risks that will might cause your project to, to delay or there might be certain things that have been unforeseen that will result in you doing certain things addition, in addition to what was planned. So, and again, don't uh, hear what I'm not saying. I'm not saying you shouldn't adjust your project plan. Your project plan is a live document which should be adapted as the, the circumstances change. But to run an effective project management, you need to uh, be careful and have a formal process to changing your, your project plan. Because if you really nearly uh, change your project plan, you might not finish that project or that project might fail. Or that project will overrun in terms of the time and the cost. So to, to manage your project properly, you need to make sure that quality you stick to the, to the plan. And if there's anything additional, as long as it's not critical, it will cause the project to fail. Then you can add that to say, no, in phase two, we'll do one, two, three, four. So instead of, uh, if you, you see opportunity to say, 
Um, okay, we wanted the spaza shop as our project, right? But if we add a liquor store, it will, it will, it will make nice. It will be nice. We can service a, a diverse uh, customers. Great. But first, let's finish the spaza shop project. Implement it and finish it based on the project plan. And then you can add the, the, the liquor store as part of your phase two. Which, which is very, 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 very important when you're implementing the, the project. So, scheduling becomes important. You need to schedule the activities. But, as I said, there are two main things when it comes to scheduling. You need to make sure that you, 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 you know the critical path. The longest path to the end of the project. So, when you present to your customer or to the team, whoever, depending on the type of project, that you know which... To what is your longest path to your project completion? Once you have that, then it's locked. You know this project is going to be completed from the date to the end. And you know you have sufficient time there. And like, if you don't know, if you don't follow the longest path, you might compress the date to only realize that you can execute the project within that specific time frame. And... We know if you don't execute, execute your project within the time frames, it means your customers will be very unhappy with you. And the, the main thing, the other one, the other main thing on project, uh, project scheduling is the allocation of resources. Don't double book your resources because if you double book them, you might think you're going to finish your project early, but to only realize that, no, but this resource can't do two things at the same time. So they, so they need to wait and finish one, one part and then complete another one later. So now that as well can extend your, 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 your project scheduling. So those are uh, the key things that you need to make sure that you, you take into account when you're doing your project scheduling. And availability of resources as well, it doesn't only apply to activities within the project. Right, this laptop within the project, maybe you might be using one laptop, but there might be other business needs outside this project that might need this laptop. So, if we don't take those into account, then we print the project based on the resources uh, utilization only within the project. We might not have a laptop for two weeks, that means the project is not being executed. So, when you're looking at the resource allocation, when you're doing your scheduling, keep in mind, make sure that the resources, they're not double booked in your project and they're not double booked even outside your project. If it's an accountant, you might find that he's running audits towards the end of financial year, maybe it's around February, March, whatever. There are a lot of financials that they need to do. So, they might not be available to do your financial projections. But because you didn't consider one their availability outside the project, then you, you will budget that you're going to complete in a certain space of time to only realize that, no, you can't because you didn't allocate the, your resources the way you're supposed to have allocated them. So resource allocation is very, very critical. And it can be tricky. It can be a tricky exercise because uh, you might not... Uh, think about what this resource is doing outside the project. You might be uh, focusing on this project to say, how do we uh, uh, execute this project? How long can it take you? And how much will it cost, you, cost us? But forget to ask the question, what else are you doing outside the project in terms of the time? Or if it's a, it's a physical resource, who else is utilizing the resource? Will it be available at the time that we need it? Okay. So, and we know as SMEs, right, we're operating with limited resources. And uh, embracing and applying the project management principles will go a very long way in allocating resources. Because it's it not only going to affect one project. It also affects other projects. Because you might be working on this project. No, I need the laptop. I've promised the client that I'm going to complete the project in this time frame. But there are other projects that are supposed to be completed. 
and you didn't take that into account when you were making the promises or when you were developing your your project plan so you must look when you're doing the planning you must look at your project holistically to make sure that the, the resources available are really available they don't have other commitments and as i said and i repeat that they are not double booked even within the the project then if you do that then your scheduling and your timing will be perfect where you wouldn't disappoint your customers by delivering your product or services late which is the biggest thing that is killing the reputation of small businesses they fail to deliver or they deliver late or <coughs> yes yes or, or they deliver a shoddy work or maybe poor quality work because they didn't do the proper uh, project planning they didn't allocate enough resources so when they see that no issue we don't have we quoted maybe uh, lower than we should have they start cutting corners where now they're no longer doing the things that they're supposed to 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 have done or they're not doing things the way they they they're supposed to do them okay so planning is very very critical you also see it when it comes to um the roads eh? the tender premiers and doing roads and stuff our we see that uh, they've done this road uh, two months ago but when it rains now the portals are back that's one of the the challenges to say you find okay but not all the time but i believe most of the time is either poor the poor project management in this way one remember the tender tenders are a competitive bidding right so if somebody is not doing a proper project management where they analyze the resources the activities the required team members and all this and the objective that needs to be achieved you tend to under price because you might not have taken into account the delays you might not have taken into account the risk maybe uh, raining uh, ukraine where maybe your 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 tar is more expensive than it was before you didn't take into account uh, that you might not have tlbs in a certain time with certain period so without taking into account a lot of things you might think that you are costing it's it's good enough but keep in mind that you're also trying to beat your competitors so without applying your mind properly without applying the project management principles right the the tender premiers okay this is an ignorant statement you'll forgive me the tender premiers tend to underprice on project and one we've seen it one you find that there's a bridge to nowhere it's not completed because uh, the budget is depleted okay there's this level of corruption here and there okay maybe more in most projects but that's not what i'm focusing on i'm focusing on the real project issues to say one you find that the projects are not in completed or the quantities that are delivered are not the same are not what was initially on the tender specification it's because of most of the time outside just pure greediness and corruption is the poor project management plans they're not planning their project the way they're supposed to be planning them they're not allocating the resources the way they're supposed to be allocating them so it's very important when you schedule your activities you identify which activities must you put where when will these activities be conducted and do i have available resources for me to to execute this project without doing that then the scheduling becomes uh, out of work and then remember time is money in business so you might be spending money that you don't have and you might end up providing poor quality road if you are constructing a road or bridge or rdp house you might not build the the house or the road to to the spec because you under budgeted you under budgeted because you don't you didn't apply proper project management principles that you're supposed to have applied one of them is scheduling making sure that you schedule your project accordingly you allocate the resources accordingly and you make sure that when you're scheduling you're following the the critical path 
That's the key of executing the project the way it's supposed to be executed is your project plan. Okay. Okay, we spoke about the activities that you put you have to put in your project plan. We spoke about the the team, the stakeholders, the resources, the sponsor, the funding. And then but when you're putting together your project plan, right? One, it must have your executive summary. Meaning, it must summarize what the project is all about. Where, if somebody is, picking, is, is looking at your project plan, first, on the executive summary, the, pe the person must get a gist of what is in the project plan. Right? And the second one is highlighting the scope of the project. What is this project going to do? How far are you going to go? What activities are going to be done? When are they going to, no, no, okay, not when, but the scope to say, we're raising funding for this Baza shop. Uh, we're going to employ so many people to execute this project. These are the resources that we're going to need. These are the number of hours and this, the funding that we're looking for. So that's the scope to say, we're going to raise funding. We're only raising the funding in from the Limpopo institution for, for argument's sake, or from Gauteng institution from, or from, Northwest institution or for Northern Cape institutions. That's the, the scope of the, the project. So that must be must be clear. So you start with summarizing executive summary of your project, then you go into the scope of your project so that you, you bring in the, the reader or the person who will be implementing the project or the person who will be going through the project to understand the scope of the project. Now, the third one, you look at the structure of the project, right? How are you going to be structured? Okay, the structure is more on the planning side, the execution, the reporting, and the closeout. That's more or less the structure of, of a project. But certain projects can be broken down even further. But I'm just giving you the broader structure of uh, the project to say you have the planning side, you have the planning activities, I mean, you have the execution activities, you have the reporting, and then um, feedback activities then you have the closure activities that's now in, on, in that section you put all these activities in maybe uh, work in the work breakdown structure they, they call it because it gives you the the breakdown of the work according to main activities then after you've done the activity then you define the resources that are required what you're gonna need you define you're gonna need the build you're gonna need the building you're gonna need the funding you're gonna need the computer you no know, those things you need access to a printer to print the business plan and all those things so then you have highlighted the the resources that are required and then now you come to the timelines you scheduling you schedule the execution when will what needs to be done when by when by who so you put a nice proper scheduling in your in your operational plan and then the last one now it's it's obviously in in the in the scheduling as well you need to incorporate best on the executive on the scope of the project you'll have where you are you define the team members you define the stakeholders you define the risk management or the risks that have been identified and everything else and then in the resources you're just defining what which resources are required for you to be able to execute the project and then after that then you are in the timelines now <coughs> timelines when and which activities are going to be executed so and i went into a little bit detail on the activities where you define you look at your critical path I, I've, which I explained earlier, you look at the availability of the resources, then you allocate your, your timeline. But the timeline, that's where most projects succeed or fail. So make sure that, as I explained earlier, you allocate the, the timeline the way you're supposed to allocate them. You look at your critical path, you look at availability of resources, but not only for the project, even externally, is the resource fully ded dedicated to this project or it's split between other projects then you need to take that into account when you're doing your planning and <coughs> lastly because you said remember i said the project plan is a living document 
So as you learn, as you identify things, you need to capture them in your uh, change management, the things that you need to change. Okay, there must be process for you to change them, but you need to, to have a portion in your report as you're learning certain things, as you're updating certain things, and you identify the lesson learned and the things that you are you wanna do differently after after this project, or even when you're still executing the project. So that's the last part where you put in the lesson learned and all that. So that's the more or less the structure of your your project plan. You have executive summary. You have the scope of the of the project where if almost everything goes in there your risk assessment your stakeholders your team and your 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 main activities where the objectives and all those things and then you have a structure of your program and then you start putting them where are they the structure is uh, planning execution reporting and closure and then or close out and then you go where you define the resources which resources are required for these activities. Remember, you define the activities nicely. So you need to see which resources are required. Once you did the resources, then you do your timeline. You put your timeline together, and that's all your project plan. You can present the, the project plan to whoever, to your customer or to your uh, internal team, because it will have all the things that are needed. The people will know when this project is going to start and finish, They'll know the resources that are required. They'll know how the project is structured. They'll know the scope and they'll know like the executive summary of, of, of the project. And keep the lesson learn section where you will continuously update it as in when you learn new things. That is our, our lesson on the, on the project plan. That is how you, you design the project plan. But as I said earlier, our Super Dealmaker application makes it easier for you to, to develop a, a project plan. So you just log in into the, the website, then you start um, your project, and then you implement the project. A plan that will take you days to develop. With Super Dealmaker, you can develop it in, in minutes. Or, but it will require more information, but within an hour, you can have your project plan. So you, it takes away the stress of trying to do a scheduling and all that. It schedules the, the, the project for you. So utilize the, the Super Dealmaker project plan development, and it also helps you to, to monitor the, the project implementation. That is our lesson on defining the project and project plan development. I thank you.